Hi there. In the last video I showed you the uh, hardware and software you'd need to do some basic backing track playback with uh, Ableton Live. And in this video I'm going to show you uh, how to get Ableton set up for uh, doing backing tracks, at least the way I do. Um, and, you know, the file management and some of the other stuff involved as well. So uh, I've got Ableton Live Suite here, but uh, as before, you can use the uh, the sort of mid-level version of Live, and you'll get all the same results. Uh, so first thing, before we jump into the software, let's make a place for all of our uh, backing tracks and their audio uh, to live. So uh, I'm here in the Finder. I'm going to go to my Music folder, and uh, Ableton, when you install it, it already makes an Ableton folder. We're going to leave that alone. Um, I want a file to put, uh, uh, a, a, actually a few folders to put uh, the Ableton project files uh, and then the actual audio that we're going to load into Ableton Live so that they all stay kind of organized and in the same place. I find that um, if I don't do this, I'll accidentally delete the audio file and then I'll show up for a gig and, you know, the, the, the files are missing and that's really horrible. So uh, before I do anything in Ableton, uh, I make sure that I have my organization together. So I'm going to go um, Ableton files and then uh, Ableton tracks. You call it Ableton Audio, whatever. Uh, but these files, uh, the file folders, need to stay exactly in the same place. I put them in music. You could put them in documents. doesn't matter. Uh, just know that we're going to be adding on to these every time we do a new song. So um, Ableton Files will have all our project files on there, and uh, we'll, we'll get to that in a moment. And then Ableton Tracks uh, will house all of our uh our audio that we're going to use in Ableton. So now once that is done, let's open up our Ableton Tracks folder and uh, linked in the description down below here in the YouTube video is a file called JK Count Off and Click. Uh, so download that and then we want to put that in our Ableton Tracks folder like that and double click and let's open that up. And inside you'll see there's uh, a whole bunch of uh, count offs and clicks. And uh, I don't have every single tempo, but we don't have to worry about that because Ableton's actually going to do a really nice job for us um, in the next video uh, of being able to time stretch these into just about any uh, tempo in between lower, higher, or, or whatever. So uh, that's helpful. And this is just kind of the basic count off and click that I use on uh, all my gigs. Uh, haven't gotten too many drummers that have complained about it. Uh, in fact, before I put it together, I did ask uh, about four or five drummers what they'd like to hear. And that's how I came up with, with that. So, um, And then I also happen to have uh, the f song that made me, as a keyboard player, uh, Learn Ableton, which is uh, Just Dance by Lady Gaga. There's a little bit too much to cover um, as a single keyboard player there. Um, so that's kind of where, where that came from. So I'm going to make a new folder. Uh, go here, File, New Folder. Call this Just Dance. And I'm going to bring uh, these two files, the MP3s. So I have the uh, original which I grabbed off the album, and then I have the instrumental, which I grabbed off of YouTube. We'll take those and we'll put those in the Just Dance folder. And I highly advise before you do anything in uh, uh, Ableton that that's your, your workflow. Uh, get, get it there first. Um, and with that set up, let's do uh, one last little bit of setting up here in live before we in our next video uh, actually start laying the song out so this is the first time i've opened up live on this machine uh, i authorize it and all that stuff so i'm going to go um, live menu 
preferences and I want to set my audio input device to no device because we're not recording we're just playing back and then our audio output device to my uh, audio interface in this case I'm using the Motu Ultralight works great and I need to tell it uh, what channels it's going to be spitting audio out on. So 1 and 2 is already going to be set, but we also want to tell it that uh, we're going to use uh, output 3 as well. And that's where I click track for our drummer uh, or the rest of the band and the count off, all that sort of stuff. That's going to go there. So we'll say OK. Great. And uh, now I won't get too crazy into this, but uh, if I go look to my outputs, I now have the option of not only channels 1 and 2, uh, but channel 1, 2, and then 3 and or 4, which will be, uh, channel 3 will be our output for our drummer. And when we pick up in the next video, I will show you how we lay this song out in the session. It'll take a little bit of time and uh, a little bit of the theory and and kind of why we do uh, this particular layout and uh, you know kind of what I've run into uh, so join me in the next video thanks for watching